Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how you can do a Photoshop background removal quickly and easily. So you can then remove a background just like that, and then replace that with anything else that you want, like this nice beachfront photograph. I'll be showing you a couple of different ways to remove backgrounds, but if it's easy like this, then you can use the Subject Select. Go up here to Select, Subject, and there we go, there is the selection. Now sometimes the edges here might not be as clean as you like. Let's go up here to Select and then choose Select and Mask. There we go. But I'm just gonna go around the edge here, overlap just a little ways over the edge like that, and then just brush along here along that edge and go clear around. And this will just tell Photoshop to come back in and re-examine that edge. And hopefully that will do any little fine tuning for us that we need and make it just a little bit cleaner in here. Clear down this side and then we'll get around to that bottom side. Okay, there we go. Now let's go over here where it says Output 2. And I want to output this to a new layer with layer mask. We've now removed that background and it's a pretty clean edge. It's not perfect, but it's pretty clean. Looks pretty good. We have one spot right down here. Let's just zoom in on that. We'll clean that up. There we go. Now this will be cleaned up on the layer mask right hand side. Look for that outline. White shows, as you can see here, and black hides. Let's make sure we have our white brush. That's good. You have a paintbrush. Here's the last brush I used. That's a bit on the large side. So I'll bring my size down. I want it fairly small. That's pretty good right there. That's not bad. And I don't want too much hardness or too much softness. I'll put someplace in the middle, about halfway. And then just paint over this, and that will then repair that little bit. Just right to the edge. That's fixed, all taken care of. Now, once we have this done, we can put any new background you want in here just by adding it in as a new layer over here. Now, easy way to do that is just use the place command. I'll just click on the background here and I'll go up here to File and Place. I'll be doing Place Embedded. Here we are at the last folder I used and there's the picture I used right there. Click on that palm trees, choose Place. Place also brings it in to fit on your page. It's a little bit too short top to bottom. So I'm just going to raise that up just a little bit up here. And same thing at the bottom. That just squeezes out just enough so it now fits the image perfectly. And then hit the check mark. Now at this point, I can go back up here to the dog layer and then move the dog around. And if I go too far, I lose that left edge. So I have to keep that against that left edge. I think right about in here looks pretty good. You may want to adjust your values and your colors of your background. Now for that, I'm going to go here to our new background layer. And let's add an adjustment layer above this one. So layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation, where it says use previous layer, check that checkbox. It will then be applied only to that one layer. And here's our controls. And if I just kind of squint my eyes, it looks like it's maybe just a little bit too yellowy in here in the background. Hard to say exactly, but I'm going to go here to the yellows, bring the yellow saturation down just a little bit. And that looks a little bit better, I think. Maybe a little more blue. Go for our blues. And then bring my blues up just a little bit. And that's a little bit closer, I think, to the foreground image. Okay, let's now adjust our values for the background. Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and this time Levels. Check that checkbox, choose OK, and here's our Level Control. Now grab the middle control, this is your midtones, and use that to adjust the overall values of the picture. Left-hand side, this will darken down the darks. Right side brightens the whites up, and I think that's getting pretty close now, looking like he's actually in that shot, and that's what I was aiming for. And here's a very difficult picture. Let's say I wanted to have just the foreground girl and everything else remove. I can't use subject select that would give us both girls that wouldn't work and because of the values in here black shirt against black jacket right down here that's gonna be very difficult for any of the automated tools inside of Photoshop to fix that. There are different ways of making your basic selection. I tend to like using the polygonal lasso tool for most selections and that's right up here. We'll just grab that one and we'll make a nice clean selection right around this girl and then clean it up with the refine tool. I'll start over here someplace and I'm just going to make a nice careful selection. This will take a little bit of care and just work your way around. Don't worry if you're just a little bit off. That will be cleaned up when we're using the refine edge on this to kind of clean things. So just work our way around. There we go. Then you get down to a spot like this where it's getting close to the edge. Hold the space bar down. Get the hand tool. You can then push this up. Now it's real, real super fine hairs in there. We're not going to get those no matter what I do. I don't care what tool you use. They're too close in value to that background and they're too small. So you'll lose some of those real super fine wispy hairs. All right, space bar. Areas like this right on the jacket edge fairly easy fairly fast to do this okay if you go off the picture down here you can go clear outside and then just go straight across outside now right here there's that problem with that jacket and that sleeve they're almost the same color so be very careful in this section in here now we can see that but this is something which Photoshop is not going to be able to spot that difference so this is where you have to come in here and basically do it the hard way luckily this isn't that difficult of a process as you can see here it goes relatively fast now once this is done we also can clean this up at the the layer mask level. 
Again, we have black against black in here. Okay, here's the hair on that side, on the left side girl. So let's go ahead and just go right up against that edge right there and then work our way out just outside of the hair. Back on the hat. Again, hold the space bar down to move the image around. And we can now see our starting point again. Once we get around this part of the hat in here. Okay, right back to the beginning. And there's our base selection. Let's now go up to select and mask. Click on that button. Right hand side, there's our red mask. You can see how these things look by changing your mask look. There's the standard. That's the marching ant effect. There's the overlay. Here it is on black. There it is on white. I tend to use the overlay most of the time in here. My brush is a little large this time. I'll bring my brush size down just a little bit. I don't want to go too much larger than my edge. That's pretty good. And then just brush right over that edge and let Photoshop go in and clean up that edge. You can see right there it's doing a real nice job now. Okay, we're down to the hair. Now again, you can hold the space bar down and move your image. Now with the hair, I found if you brush in like this, it tends to give the best effect. So you can see it's getting a little fine hairs in there. There you go, looks real nice. And again, just brush up into the hair and along that edge. Okay, that's good. And I'm just going pretty fast down here. Notice how the plus sign I'm keeping outside of my selection and then it's overlapping into the selection. That should give us just the right effect. Now, most of the time, if you are going onto a similar color background, you'll have the best quality. So this is a green background, so something else with greens or blues will look real nice. If it's a totally different effect, different color, then you may have to do a bit more work. Okay, that was not too good there. I kind of messed things up. I'm gonna use the Control Z key and just undo that. I'll leave that one at that hard edge. Again, this is, area in here is black on black. Very hard for Photoshop to spot that. So I'll leave that whole area alone and just stay out of there. And then up here again, there's the hair. It should do okay on the hair. So whenever you have colors that are similar, like right down here, black on black, it's not perfect. We'll fix that up at the layer mask stage. Okay, we're just about done. It's a little bit right around this edge of the hat and I think we'll be okay. Now, sometimes it may get a little bit weird like in here. We'll take a look at that in a second and I'll show you an easy trick to clean that up. Okay, right back to our starting point, which is right there. And that's our first pass around. If you want to, you can come down here and increase your contrast a little bit. This sometimes will help to clean up any bad edges. It just increases the contrast of that edge area. You can shift your edge in and out. I don't really like that tool that much, but there are more ways to clean this up once we have their basic mask done. So let's go down here to selection. Same thing, new layer with layer mask that gives us our protection that way. Choose OK. There's a layer mask. And you can see in here, there's a little bit of kind of a softness. Some of the background is showing in there. There's a couple things you can do to try to clean that edge up just a little bit. See, it's kind of messy in here. The first thing I like trying to do is simply to increase the contrast on the layer mask in spots. And for that, we'll go over here, left hand side, and then right here, grab the burn tool. And there's the brush size. That's pretty good. Check our settings up here, exposure 11%. I'm going to change this about halfway up, about 50% or so, right around halfway. That's nice. Range midtones, that's fine. And then just brush right along that edge. And frequently, this is all you're going to need to clean up those little kind of messy bits. And that looks really nice in there. I think we're doing okay. Okay, so just a little bit of this along the edge. Now, some places might need a little bit more. This might not be everything that we need, but this will get most of it done. And then we can do our final little touch-ups. Okay, that's pretty good over here. Let's try the left-hand side over here. Again, same thing, just coming in and brushing right over that edge. I'm just basically burning in and increasing the contrast and that hides that stuff that's just kind of wispy, kind of show through. So that really fixes that up nicely. Okay, that looks good. A little bit up in here. It's that part right there, pretty nice. That's good. Okay, around the top up here. And then I think we'll have this stage done. The last thing we'll do is to take a look at the actual layer mask itself and see how that looks. Okay, looks nice. Background's been removed. Last thing, hold the Alt key down and click on the layer mask itself. This opens up just the layer mask. We can then take a look at that. And I think that edge looks pretty nice. Look, it's a bit messy right down here, left-hand side. I'm gonna zoom in on this. We'll go back to our same tool, back to the burn tool. Still works when you're looking at it like this, at this level, so we can then come in and just clean up that edge on the left-hand side. And once that's done, we'll have our nice clean layer mask in here. We can then put anything we want to on the background. We'll find a nice background for this picture. Now right here, it's a bit much. So I'm gonna come in and I'm actually gonna just paint this in and right down here and clean up that part of that mask. Let's go here to our paintbrush. And we have it on white, that's good. I'm gonna go a little bit harder on that brush. Let's bring our brush size down a little bit. Let's bring our hardness up pretty close to the top, not all the way, maybe maybe 80% in here might be a nice number for that. 
There we go. And let's see how that does. Okay. Just a little bit of softness on that edge. That's not too hard. And I'll just paint in right up near that edge, but not quite. I don't want to re go over that edge. Just clean out some of the stuff that's inside of the layer mask right along that edge. Looks good. Hold the space bar down. Let's just take a look at the rest of our edge in here. Look for any real bad problems. I think most of that is fine because that should be kind of soft edge up in there. Here's some of that hair. Okay, this edge down here. Now this is our hard edge. So you may want to soften that up just a little bit. Let's go to our blur tool, make it real small. There we go, it's a real small edge. I'm just gonna come right along this edge and just blur that edge down just a bit, just so that it mimics the look of the other side. But just a little bit, it doesn't need very much. Just a little bit of softening up along that edge. And that looks good. And then right down here, just taking a little bit of the harshness off of that edge. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to our background, then back to our regular image, and then we'll zoom back to fit screen. And there we go. There's our nice background removal. Let's now put a new background in here. File, and again, I like to use the place embedded. Give this kind of foresty thing. I'll see how this looks. There we go. Came out the wrong layer. I'm just gonna pull it underneath so it becomes a background layer. And there we go. Now again, it's a little soft. The colors could use a little bit of adjustment, but I think it's pretty good, a pretty good match on here. Notice how the edge looks really nice in there with that technique. Okay, so this is a real hard case where we had that double girl in there. Let's just hide the air mask for a second. So real difficult with this girl, especially right down here. So using that handmade layer mask, the handmade selection using the polygonal lasso tool, a great way to go for this kind of a selection. Let's say we had something with a lot of curved edges. This tool is lousy for curved edges. It makes straight lines. So for curved things, you'll want to use a different technique. Okay, in this picture, a lot of curved edges, a few straight edges right here, right here, a little bit over here, but everything else is curved. And this makes it very hard to use the polygonal lasso tool. That would just give you kind of jagged edges. You don't want that. So for this, we'll use the pen tool much better. So we hit the pen tool and there's a new one here, curvature pen tool, relatively recent. Click on this, click your beginning spot right there, right in that corner, come down a little ways and then click and drag and then come down and do another one right down here. And it turns those into curves automatically. Now don't put these too close together. You can go a little ways apart on these. If they're too close, it's just too much work to refine it. So go like that. Now here where I'm changing direction, this is good to come in and use a straight bit right here. And I'll just continue that right there. And I'll go back to that curvature tool and we'll finish up this curve with a spot here and a spot right there. Now in this one, I'm gonna use the straight tool and then just clean that up just to save some time. That's pretty easy, just the straight pen tool in here. And I'll use that curvature tool for the larger curves. Go right to there, and I'll come up here a little ways and then up to here and that will curve out in a second. There we go. And then around this far and right around to here and then bring that back down to there. Now notice that the curves are all kind of strange. They're not perfect, but they're real close. And we can fix that by going over here direct selection tool, click on a point and you can then control that point. And these are locked together. You see there's a, a top one and a bottom one. They're locked together. So I move this up, that one comes down. I want to unlock that in here. So hold the alt key down and I can then move just that one. And same thing up here and just kind of move that around until it's better. So you can then come around and just grab these different control handles. You can move the middle part here, put that right in your curve and then grab these endpoints and pull it out, make your curve longer, pulling it in, make your curve shorter. And then just move these around until you've cleaned up that curve and it's exactly where you want. So this is a great way to come in and handle curves like this and get them just exactly perfectly right. And it may take a little bit of work back and forth. It's not quite as fast as using the polygonal lasso tool, but it allows you to do these curves, which you can't do with that tool. And you can get absolutely perfect with this particular tool. It looks pretty good around here. I think we're okay here. So a bit over to the side, like like that looks pretty good now in here let's just zoom in on this one go to the zoom tool so you can go back and forth on this you don't have to stick with that you can actually go back and forth okay back to our tool again i'll grab this one i'll pull it in just a little ways that's good let's pull this right into that corner right there and that looks pretty good you just in just a little bit here now in this one i'd like to have a curve in here there isn't a curve right now so another tool over here this tool up here is a convert tool click and pull like that we can then pull these control handles out and it now acts as a curve. So there we go, that's taken care of. And then back to our direct select tool and you can then control that just like your other curves. And again, come in here and just really refine this exactly the way you want. Let's just pull this one in to the edge and I'll pull these in just a little bit. So it takes a little bit of finessing possibly, but this will give you an exact edge, which is real nice, very easy to do it this way. This right to here, 
Let's get this one right up against that edge here. I'll put this one right under that corner and then put this one right in here. So here's where I was planning on just using these straights and then cleaning the straights up by converting those to curves. There it is. Let's just take care of this top one up here. You can click on that and then pull and you can pull it out to a curve. Sometimes it'll come in rotated, just unrotate like that and then pull that in. You can then adjust that exactly where you want that. And that's pretty good right in about there. That's good. I think that's nice. A little larger on this side, possibly. There we go. Okay, up here, this one could be a curve again, that point right there. And once again, click and drag out. I'll just open that up. There we go. Now it's curving the wrong way. So I'll pull this up. Let's make sure we're on our direct select tool again. Get that right there. And on this one over here, let's go back up here to our convert tool. I'm just going to click on this. Hold the alt key down, click on that center point. Click again. We can now move this one independently like that. And that takes care of that curve right there. That all looks good. And then one more up here needs to be a curve on this side. That edge is good. So back to this tool again. Click and I'll pull that out. That's now a nice curve. And back to our direct select tool and then bring that into the edge. Then it's just a matter of coming in and adjusting your remaining curves in here to get the edges cleaned up precisely. And that's looking pretty good right in here. There we go. Top edge looks good. It's a little bit out right here. I'll just pull it in just a touch. There we go. And this side over here, rotate this one just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Pull this out just a touch right here. And I think we've got a nice match now. Okay, let's go ahead and fit screen. Now at this point, we need to convert this into a selection and use that to create our layer mask. So go up here to our move tool right here and then choose the paths tab. Here's our working path. That's what that is that we just did. Right click, make selection. I'm gonna give the feather radius so here just one pixel, just kind of soften that edge up a little bit. There's our selection. Let's go back to layers and now can hit the layer mask button. And there we go. There's our layer mask made using the pen tool. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, check out my channel for a bunch more Photoshop videos, and I'll see you next time.